Can you still trust journalists? Has the American news media completely abandoned truth? Stay tuned. That's what we'll talk about on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. You know, I hear a lot of people make disparaging remarks about American journalism, and it is true. As Bill O'Reilly famously said, we're living in an age of spin and distortion. And today on Truth For New Generation, it's, it's like Journalism Day because we've got a couple of dear friends and colleagues in the room that are journalists. In a few minutes, we'll talk with Lauren Green from Fox News. But right now, with me on set, what a treat, what a privilege. My friend and brother and colleague, Paul Strand. Good to see you, sir. Three and a half decades helping lead CBN News. What a career. But uh, I want to say thanks for coming by the studios of Truth For A New Generation. My pleasure. you got bike paths here. I love to bike, so i got to be here. Well, uh, journalism. Nowadays, uh, we hear the term fake news. People, and, and let's just be honest, conservatives kind of feel like the American media is against them. Everything is biased. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about uh, journalism. What do you think is the current state, the, the health or lack thereof of American journalism, Paul? I think we're in absolute crisis. I think that now that the, the mainstream media so much believes that they own truth and that everybody else's voices aren't speaking truth, so they must control it and they must, they must censor it. And I think it's a very sad time, and I think there's a company line on almost every single issue, and so that's all you hear. I've got so I could hardly watch the evening newscast because it's just like endless, endless. Here's the party line. Here's the party line. Here's the party line. You, you've been on both sides of the camera. You've been in the newsroom. You've been on air. Uh, when you're watching news, regardless of the network, can you, because this was your industry for 30 years, can you tell when we've left truth and we're go gone to narrative. Yes, it, it's most disturbing because it used to be reporters packages where you saw the reporter on there that that would be the facts time, the truth time, you know, just here's the story. And then you might get a little spin from the uh, anchors. But now that spin is right there in the reporters packages, almost all of them all the time. When you think about what's gone on with the pandemic, the election, all these things, there's a there's a, like I said, that company line, and even the reporter will be spinning you as he's talking. It's coming out of his mouth that it's like, well, here's what I think. Does this, in your opinion, jeopardize our democracy, free speech? I mean, the distortion of the news. And by the way, one of my heroes, uh, Mortimer Adler, he was editor of Encyclopedia Britannica, editor of the Great Books of the Western World, 70 years ago, one of, the, one of the most literate men of the 20th century, Mortimer Adler, warned about the distortion of the news. Mm -hmm. um, why, why is that a concern to people? Yeah, because if, you're not, if, if all you're doing is just hearing one thing, and if the whole society begins to believe it, then it takes it. it it's like we're herded. The, America will be herded towards what these people are telling them is the truth. And it's not the truth. You know, I've worked for a place that basically was telling a whole different truth coming from God's point of view, coming from the biblical point of view. And it's an entirely different story. Mm -hmm. What if we lose that? What if this, the, the herd is carried off so that you never hear that anymore? How are people supposed to have values that are eternal and that are good? I worry about that. I worry about all those things being lost and that evil being called good and good being called evil. Do you ever encourage young people to, that are Christian youth to go into journalism? I do. It's a, it's a rough thing, though, because there are so few places like CBN News where you can relax and be yourself and tell what you believe is the actual truth. Mm -hmm. That's a tough thing these days. If you try to do that in a secular newsroom, you'll be gone in weeks. Wow. Hey, we're going to have a conversation with Lauren Green from Fox News. Lauren is a longtime friend and colleague, just celebrated 25 years on air. She was the first on-air anchor with Fox News. Wow. And uh, we're going to talk with Lauren Green and more with our time with Paul Strand. So stay tuned on this journalism edition of Truth For A New Generation. Mm -hmm.
Have you ever wanted to raise your hand during a sermon? Well, here's your chance. Hi, Alex McFarland here from the nationally syndicated radio program, Exploring the Word. For more than 10 years, my co-host, Bert Harper, and I have taught scripture and answered hundreds of Bible questions. We've compiled a brand new book of the top 100 Bible questions from listeners of all ages, from questions about supposed Bible contradictions to apologetics facts that prove the truths of Scripture. This new book features practical content that will make the Bible come alive for you. Can we really be sure that God exists? Are there contradictions in the Bible? I need a book that will help me understand the Bible better. There is so much good content in this book. 100 Bible Questions and Answers, published by Broad Street Publishers and available online at your local bookstores and also through afastore.net. Welcome back to Truth for a New Generation. We're so honored for the guests that you're about to meet. And, you know, we're talking about journalism And you may have seen in the news that Fox News Corporation just celebrated 25 years. And uh, in October, they rang the bell on the floor of the stock market as the New York Stock Exchange opened. And it was a great celebration. Well, we've been very privileged for a number of years to have a a great friend and colleague within Fox News, Lauren Green. You see Lauren Green do news. She has covered a lot of stories related to religion and culture. And we're very privileged to have her along with Paul Strand, who just, uh, by the way, congratulations on your retirement, 35 and a half years with CBN News. and I lived. Yeah, and uh, so honored that you're with us on set, but we're going to have a conversation with Lauren Green coming to us from New York City. Welcome to the Truth for a New Generation broadcast. Well, thank you very much. And it was actually the NASDAQ we rang the opening bell for, um, okay. which is different now. I mean, it's, it's not the uh, uh, Wall Street. Uh, which is the normal, the Dow Jones and all that, but it sure. was NASDAQ, but it was great fun. Incredible. Better. Sure. Uh, exactly. Well, you know, I want to congratulate you, Lauren, because that, that is really an accomplishment, 25 years with Fox, um, uh, built into one of the great uh, news voices in the world, and you've been there from the very beginning. Yeah, you know, I, was, I have the distinction of being the first um, on-air person hired for Fox News Channel. I was actually hired over the summer before they before they launched. And so I did a lot of the pilot news shows. Um, And I remember working on a a, a plywood desk uh, and kind of a chair and no prompter. And I had scripts and we were looking like this. And then finally we moved over to a studio, which was a rental studio until they had the newsrooms finished. We call it, it was called Unitel. And we have to, a lot of the producers called it Unihel. And, and, And because of, you know, the sort of rawness of it all. Um, and we were all learning, really, what is this going to be about? What is, how's the format going to work? Um, and we were just sitting in the studio yesterday as the um, executives presented, you know, the 25 years of this, of this network and looking at people that I've known for 25 years and thinking, these are old people now. These are, being, <laughs> it's, but it's one of those things where so many of us realize every major life event that you could experience, we experienced working at Fox and how the company stood by us. Um, deaths, uh, births, marriages, divorces, um, uh, medical emergencies, all of those things you experienced through Fox and Fox was there for us. And regardless of what people may think about their politics or what they present, I'll tell you, they, they they are. They treat their employees so incredibly well. Um, you, you will never know the devotion they have to their employees. Over the last quarter century, Lauren, um, two or three stories that you will remember as long as you live. What have been some of the the highlights and milestones that you've been able to cover? I always remember. I always talk about this one man in Amsterdam who built a replica of the Ark. And Amsterdam, you know, is not a very religious country. It's more secular than anything. So to find a man like that in Amsterdam was amazing in itself. But then for him to have such devotion to build a replica of the Ark was amazing. And so we went there to do a story on him. And I asked, well, why would you build this replica of the Ark in the middle of, you know, the byways of Amsterdam? And he said, because look around you. There's beauty everywhere. And people have forgotten God. 
because of the beauty that's around them. It's like they've worshiped the creation and not the creator. So I built the ark to teach them, to remind them, you know, who made the beauty. It was just an amazing story. The other story I think is always going to the Vatican, uh, covering anything that, um, like a big event at the Vatican, the conclave, um, the, um, you know, the picking of the choosing of a new Pope. Uh, I do remember an incredible um, morning when everybody was gathered at the Vatican because the new Pope had been chosen. And after the event and, you know, we who were in the Fox workplace in Rome just wandered into, you know, the, it was like a four or five block walk into the Vatican and, and the people were just, it was like a big party. Everybody was celebrating this new event and it, it was amazing. Um, other stories um, are kind of in that vein, just people um, just covering stories of, there was a man who had, um, who had died and his doctor who was a believer had prayed him back to life mm. and no one could believe that miracle and yet all the evidence showed that the man just stood over him prayed and prayed and prayed him this his his legs were black mm. he had died and the doctor prayed and he came back wow uh, it's a miracle. it was a miracle so these are the kind of stories that stick with you. Um, uh, there are many others that I can't even recall at this point, but there are just many people that I've just talked to, and especially in the podcast, where I'm able to really talk with people um, uh, at length. Um, you know, just like I was just talking yesterday with Jay Warner Wallace, who was, uh, you know, the founder of Cold Case Christianity, the former Cold Case detective, who really sure. uses his forensic knowledge to um, to solve cold case murder cases, but also he used it as an atheist to um, research Christianity and skeptically approaching it. And he was turned into a believer. And, and it's just like so many uh, people like him and you can name quite a few. You can name, you know, C.S. Lewis and, you know, Lee Strobel. Um, uh, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Michael Gillen, Dr. Michael Gillen. All of these people use their expertise to investigate Christianity, hoping to debunk it, and came out as believers. This is a story that needs to be told as well. Yeah, it does. You know, Lee Strobel, who has a law degree from Yale. And, and Lee Strobel is another one of those, yes. Yeah. And, you know, that's, um, you and I have had numerous conversations about worldview and apologetics. And I, I really do think that is one of the great untold stories of our time, how people have looked at evidence, whether it be history or science or, or things like the manuscripts of the Bible. And many a skeptic has come away and said, hey, this is real. I mean, th this is, we believe by faith, that's trust, but th this is a book that is credible and, and we believe. I think that's what's interesting about uh, what uh, Jim Wallace, J. Warner Wallace <laughs> uh, talked about in his latest book, Person of Interest, because he basically doesn't even use the scriptures. You just look at the stuff around in the culture and you could piece together the gospel that way. Sure. Um, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of these people who investigate Christianity talk about is that there is a grand narrative that's in this world that if, that if Christianity is true, that this grand narrative actually fits the world. Others don't, right? Why is there pain and suffering? You know, why do good people do bad things and bad people do good things? I mean, these are the, you know, what's the purpose of my life? And where did you get this idea that something is good or bad? How do you know, right? I mean, if you really do the intellectual heavy lifting, they come away with believing in Christianity because it's the only worldview that fits, that, that fits this world. Lauren, uh, has it been challenging to be a believer? You are a Christian, and yet you have uh, spent your adult life at the top of the world of journalism. Has that been a challenge? I mean, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. I mean, I think, I don't think I could work for any other network and be this um, adamant about my beliefs. I don't, I think that um, Fox has been very, very supportive of people's um, beliefs, especially Christians. I mean, on Fox Nation and Ainsley Earhart has a show called, you know, Ainsley's Bible Study. I mean, where, <laughs> I can't imagine CBS or NBC doing that. Uh, and, um, you know, what I find in these days 
And this is why I've been trying to convince the Kendrick brothers or talk to them about doing this a kind of a new show um, is that people are comfortable with skepticism. People are very comfortable with people who are searching. They're not comfortable with people who believe, who've arrived and say, this is the truth. And I'm gonna live my life knowing that this is the truth and I'm committed to this truth. People are very uncomfortable with that. They would rather have somebody who's searching, who doesn't know, and maybe this is, and maybe this, and they're much more comfortable in that gray area, which is why, you know, Lighthouse Faith to me was just this thing. He says, no, this, this is the truth, you know, and mm -hmm. these are the reasons why. There's so much evidence out there. Why get bogged down in these sort of gray areas when the truth is right before you? And I don't think it's I don't think it's ch as challenging as it could be if I were in a place uh, in another network because you can see from their um, presentations uh, you can see the way they cover the news uh, they are they they prefer to cover it from that sort of secular humanist worldview which is it's that default mode of saying that all religions are basically equal and and you know and anybody who's done the homework say they they can't be equal because at their core. They are very, very different. Absolutely. What defines them um, are very different, uh, is very different, and at their core, they can't all, they can't both They, be they true. might all be. They, you know, they can all be false, but exactly. they can't all be true. I'm glad you mentioned your book, Lighthouse Faith. Uh, it's a great book, by the way. I highly recommend it. I've read it. And uh, the book, uh, who was your publisher on that, Lauren? It was Harper Collins. It was actually, um, uh, the uh, Harper College Collins imprint, and I want to say Thomas Nelson, but it was not, I, if you think I would know that, um, but basically it's Harper Collins. Um, yeah, it's Harper Collins, and uh, but if, if you can go online and get it. Um, I think it's still available. Um, but it was the idea, and this is what struck me about the Ten Commandments, and this is based on a sermon by Dr. Tim Keller. It's basically that the Ten Commandments are while, while they are comprehensive meaning if you break one, you kind of break them all. The first commandment is key, that I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. All the other commandments, two through 10, um, um, rely on keeping the first one. Because if you steal, it means something else is more valuable to you than God. If you commit adultery, it means someone else's love is more valuable, is, is more impressive to you and more needful to you than the love of God. Um, you know, all of those commandments then relate first to the first commandment and then second to each other, right? So the idea is that the first commandment stands as, as a beacon standing atop the other commandments. And that's where the lighthouse came through. I am the Lord your God. You shall know the God before me. If you didn't have two through 10, you could kind of by osmosis and by uh, just looking at the world, understand that this is a beacon that directs your life. Now, this is not just for, in a sense of morality. You can find this structure in pretty much everything in architecture. There is something present in architecture that has to be there in order for a building to stand. It's called the Pythagorean, um, the triangle, right? Right, right, it has to be there. You can find it in music where everything in music in the harmonic scale has to relate, it's, it's, it's defined by its relationship to the keynote in the scale and second by the relationship with everything else. And so you find these sort of, this, this template, this logo that is on everything, that this is God's logo he has placed in this world. I am the Lord your God, you have no other gods before me. You can find it in biology in terms of how important the blood is in our system. And this is the second book I'm trying to write, which is basically, um, taking that second element of the blood and um, lessons from the vineyard. And the idea is that God is light. And if you understand science, you understand that, that, that science um, has a very sacred position in science, um, that light is, is, is key. But that if you put a light beam, and this is my imagining, you put the light beam through a divine prism, it refracts into the separate lights of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So to me, Father, the Father was, you know, law. You cannot break, right? That's architecture. And then the Son is the, the spirit of sacrifice. And there's something in nature that is sacrificed that, you know, 
the, the leaves fall, the seed dies to itself in order to grow. Jesus died on the cross in order for us to have this relationship and grow with, with God. And then you've got the spirit, which is music. And that's the Holy Spirit. And there's something very special about music and the, and the harmonic scale, which I did not put in the book, but which is for the, the next book if I ever get to it. I call the fifth degree of the scale the Holy Spirit because it directs you to the home key. Do you know anything about harmonics? But what I found out later in Hebrew, they didn't have numbers. So the letters of the alphabet stood for the numbers. And the letter for the fifth letter is called Ha, and it's called the spirit. And it's called Ref. And here I've, I've said the fifth degree of the scale is like the Holy Spirit. And here in Hebrew, it just said it long before the harmonic scale was created. That's one of the things I loved about your book, Lighthouse Faith, because you use music theory to talk about God. And Lauren, it reminds me of Psalm 19 that says, the heavens and earth bear witness to the glory of God. Absolutely. Uh, I want Everyone to... out of us, I mean, I think when we were so distracted by the world and what the world wants us to get involved with, but if we really put our minds to work and understand that God is all around, like you say, like you say, the heavens declare the glory of God. This is Psalm 19. This is all around us that we can see God at work everywhere. You know, think about it. If, if gravity were holding our bodies together, all of our cells would just be flinging out into space. Sure. That's God's work. Well, well, it is. And, you know, Colossians chapter one says that Christ holds it all together. It's very interesting. It says by him, by Jesus, all things consist and it's the word cohesion from which we get the word glue. I mean, literally, God is holding all of these molecules together. It's amazing, his sustaining hand. Um, and then it hence goes back to the guy in Amsterdam who said, people have forgotten God because they, they, they take things for granted. Like, yeah. we take things for granted. We do. Hey, we've got to pull away. I want to thank you so much, not only for your time today, but for just all that you represent. Um, I talk to people all over America. They know who you are. They know you're a believer and they, they trust your voice. And so you, you are doing and have done a great work. And I want to commend you. Oh, thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate you talking and I love always talking with you. Do you have a website or where can people find your book, Lauren? Well, I, because I'm working, I never really have anybody looking at through my website. Um, but I think if you go just Google Lighthouse Faith, um, you can find it, you know, when I retire, I'm actually going to probably <laughs> do a little more work on that website, but right now I'm kind of focused on, uh, you know, my day job. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think if you Google Lighthouse Faith, uh, by Lauren Green, you'll find the book. Um, I think Amazon still has it. And if, if enough people actually, you know, start looking for it, I think the publisher will start, you know, putting it out there again. So, well, I know I speak for millions of Americans don't retire. Our nation needs you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being with us. Stay tuned, everybody. Truth for New Generation is back after this. Man, before I came to Karis, I was so broken. I dealt a lot with anxiety and depression. I didn't really realize I could have an actual relationship with God. When I came here, I started to see God like, you know, he just wants to have a relationship with me. It totally transformed the way I look at God. God longs to have fellowship with you. This is where faith comes from. It's not just head knowledge, Bible school knowledge, it's revelation knowledge that changes you. Just been set free from a lot of the bondage I was in. I haven't been depressed in so long. Pretty awesome having that just weight lifted and putting on Jesus' yoke. You come here and you meet God personally, and then he gives you a whole new direction. This is a time, this is a season of your life that God's wanting to show you who you really are and what he's wanting to do in your life. If you have a desire for Bible college, God's the one that put it there. If you're considering coming to Karis, I just want to say it's going to be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, the word of God says, Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. A world upside down where that which is true is said to be false. Welcome back to Truth for New Generation. Paul Strand, I want to say thanks for being with us. And uh, 
A comment on that, if you would. The Bible does warn about falsehood, and the Bible also urges us to be persons who pursue truth. Why do you think God places such a high premium on truth? Uh, because if, if you're not going for what's truth, then you're believing in a lie. You're, you're, it's like, what does your existence matter? If you're not there at the core values of the universe and the way that things actually work, then you're, you know, you're spinning off into falsehood. And it's the devil who's the, the, you know, the king Father of liars. Of so you're like living in his dominion instead of the real world, which is shaped by God, his values. And they're good. They're loving. They're, you know, they, they make life wonderful sure. if you'll just stay in the truth. Well, as a journalist, you've just wrapped up a 35 and a half year career of standing for truth, and I commend you. Thank you very much. The Lord told me when I was 17, you're going to work at a place called CBN News, and you're going to explore a new form of journalism, and I think that's what it was, the truth, the real truth. Well, this ministry appreciates you, and you stay in touch because uh, we, we need your, your, uh, the role model that you are in what we do. Bless Folks, you. thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're back in a moment. Like no other nation, Americans have lived under the blessing of prosperity and liberty. These gifts are part of the heritage of a country grounded in the truths of Scripture and given by God to advance the gospel at home and abroad. In these days of moral and spiritual confusion, maintaining the freedom to express our faith in the public square has never been more important. The American Family Association, working to preserve religious liberty for generations to come. The biblical bottom line, you know, the times in which we live really represent great opportunity because regardless of where you are on the political or religious spectrum, it's always great to read and study and verify things. And you, know, you know, in the New Testament book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, hold fast to that which is good and test all things. So we are to evaluate and use discernment. And when we find truth, we're to hold fast to it. And do you know what? In an age of spin and darkness, you and I can be emissaries and voices of truth. And praise God, what a uh, what a privilege that is. Speaking of truth, I want to say thank you for helping us proclaim it. We're doing events, publishing broadcasts like this. And for your prayers and support, I want to say thank you. I've got a brand new book on 100 Bible questions and answers. And for your support gift, tax deductible support to help us. We're hiring staff. We're shipping product. We're touching millions of lives. If you would be a partner with us and give a gift of at least $40, then I'm going to send you a copy of this book with 100 Bible questions and answers from our radio shows. I think it'll be a great resource that will help you in your walk and witness. So consider helping us today. Know that we're grateful. God bless you and God bless America.